what is language good for? We could say, well, language is a symbol system which is good for naming. Yeah, the many philosophers said, well, the special thing about human language is you can name objects, you can say this is a glass or in there is water and, the, and putting labels on objects is actually the main fu uh, a main function of language. Philosophers have argued otherwise. They have said, well, maybe, maybe not. In the philosophy of language, uh, th there's a strong stream of researchers now saying, well, no, this labeling approach is entirely incorrect. Actually, language is a tool for action. And what we actually uh, use language for is to make requests. I ask you to give me a glass of water by saying, well, water, or please give me water or something. So we could say as biologists, this is actually the, the selection advantage of, uh, of language or one of the most important selection advantage that we can ask other people to do things for, for, for us. We can advise them in the hunting, we can, uh, we, we can cooperate in larger communities and this is the key aspect of language. So language is action in this sense, is a tool for making other people uh, do what you want and also interacting in a social manner. So, uh, can we root this somehow in brain research? In recent studies published, for example, just in the beginning of 2016, uh, my colleagues and I uh, looked at the use of language structures, such as words, sentences, in different contexts. In one case, they were just used as labels for objects. In the other case, so the, the context was, for example, well, what is this? And the, uh, the answer was water. And in the other context was that somebody had, had the water in front of them and a second person asked, well, water, in the sense of, please give me that water. And, uh, and, and the other person handed over uh, the object. We looked at brain activation with a range of different methods. There's EEG, electroencephalography, where you put electrodes on the top of the head and record neurophysiological signals. There's MEG, magnetoencephalography, where we, we, you record neural activity, but now the magnetic fields created by the little nerve cells when they get active in large numbers together at almost the same time. And there's functional magnetic resonance imaging and, uh, and, and this uh, measures the blood flow uh, which changes as a result of brain activation. What we saw was that in this uh, context where somebody was requesting the water from somebody else, brain activation was much higher compared with a naming context. So the brain appears to care more about language use when it has a real purpose in communication. If language is just used as a label for objects, there was much less brain activation. And this difference arose already very early on, within 100, 200 milliseconds after the word could first be understood. So this indicates that this understanding of the action relevance of an utterance happens very, very fast rapidly, super, super fast. Of course, it may be of relevance for some, some philosophical issues. You may say, well, okay, those philosophers who said language function is more important than, than just labeling objects, uh, this is a, they are right because our brain activates more. However, this, uh, this, uh, this inference scheme might, uh, might not be fully convincing, but because a philosopher may also say, well, what should I care about brain activation? Well, but however, what could we do with this fact? Well, what we rec recently did with this fact is uh, we translated it into therapy of language in patients who have a stroke, who suffer from a severe neurological disease and cannot speak anymore, or have big problems uttering words, sentences, understanding even single words, and we provide therapy for them. But some of them have actually a problem in their brain, a neurological problem. 
and neurological language deficits which occur in adults and are due to brain lesions are called aphasia. Aphasia therapy is a very important uh, aphasia therapy is very important for helping those patients to improve their language uh, deficits. If we practice with these patients, we uh, we can. Uh, it, uh, if we practice with these patients for, uh, for 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 a few weeks and do it very intensively, we may see surprising uh, uh, improvements in their language skills. We created a method for for aphasia therapy, which now takes advantage of this language embedding into action. In the classical context, language therapy is frequently object labeling. So when language had this request function, the therapy effect was, at least in some populations, uh, significantly better than in, uh, in, in the object labeling naming context. So this indicates that insights from basic science and uh, taking one more step to the past, actually insights from language philosophy can have an impact on everyday therapy of language. We implemented this philosophical and neurophysiological insight by having people, our patients, interact with language. So they sat there and asked the other patients or the therapist for coffee, for water, for, for sweets, and they exchanged objects or just picture cards in that context. So patients with a severe neurological disease can actually profit from philosophy, neuroimaging, or our modern neuroscience research, if it works. To conclude, we could say philosophy modern cognitive neuroscience results, they are not just uh, for fun. We can see that we, if we apply these insights from these disciplines to in, the, in the therapy of aphasia, we can improve, uh, we can improve the methods and we can, we can end with, uh, and we can end up with better outcomes if we, uh, if, if we follow some of the theoretical guidelines and actually get inspired by the brain activation results. So to wrap up in one sentence, we know from philosophy that language is not just a labeling tool, but its most important function is to support action and social interaction. We know from neuroscience that if we embed language in action contexts, and request rather than label, our brain activates much more. We can use this information to provide an action-based language therapy. We call it intensive language action therapy. And this, uh, and this helps patients, as it seems, more than labeling therapy.